This is the Falcon 2 Pro 40 watt laser and engraver. Reality sent it to me to try in my shop and share my honest opinion about my experience. They did not pay me for this video. I'm not an expert when it comes to these devices, but I do have experience and use them when needed on my projects. I'm going to show you how I set mine up, how I used it to control an external inline fan, how I connected it to my computer on the other side of the room, and then I'm going to try it out for both cutting and engraving. I'm also going to see how the rotating tool works, and take a look at the 1.6 watt laser. The packaging was very good and everything arrived safely. The 40 watt version also comes with a 1.6 watt laser for small high precision work. The instructions were very detailed and I found it easy to assemble. I did it in less than an hour and that includes a few interruptions that I had. Once assembled, I did a camera calibration. Again, the instructions were very clear and the laser burn on-screen prompts guide you through it. The first step is showing the camera this card that has an array of dots on it and you basically just move it around inside the enclosure. The last step is to burn a pattern and click four points on that pattern in the camera view to set the calibration. I decided to do a quick cut on some 3mm stock before I moved the laser to its final location. It looked pretty good using the recommended settings. At this point my shop is a mess since I had to get my Mark III S out of the way to make space for the laser on an exterior wall. I also had to route two 50 foot USB cables through the ceiling to get to the laser area. I placed a temporary cabinet in an ugly piece of chipboard scrap on the top. I'll eventually build a new drawer cabinet for this. Out of the box the enclosure fan is on the left side of the laser but you can move it to the right side if you want. There are fan connectors on both sides so I have an unused connector on the right. The power input appeared to be a mini DIN 4 style connector. Both the camera and controller are USB-C connections. The air assist compressor sat on four vibration damping feet that I found to be very effective. It also connects with a mini DIN style connector. I wanted extra exhaust power, so I bought a 3 inch inline 120 volt AC blower to put after the enclosure fan. I'm hoping to use the unused fan connector on the right side as a signal to turn on my external inline fan. I need to verify that there is voltage across these pins when the fan is turned on and no voltage when it's turned off. Everything looks good and now I have a 24 volt signal for the fan. I'm going to use a solid state relay with a 3 to 32 volt DC input to power the external fan. This will automatically turn on or off my external inline fan when either the laser controls it or when it's switched on or off by the switch on the frame. I need to make an enclosure with I.O. connections for my relay setup. I'm just using things that I already have on hand. I spent about 20 minutes designing an enclosure to print for this. It'll have a power cable to plug into the wall outlet, a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack for the signal from the laser, and a snap-in AC plug for the inline fan. I'm using DuPont connectors on the other end of the barrel plug cable because they fit in the unused fan connector on the frame.
I'm routing my signal cable down the same channel the fan would have been routed through if the fan were on that side. I verified the barrel plug connections. I then verified that my switching device works. I then mount the inline fan. At this point, I really don't care about the possibility of the inline fan fighting the enclosure fan. It has a speed knob on it and I can adjust that if I need to. I'm going to leave some extra length on the hose until I know exactly where everything will be. I ran two 50 foot active USB cables from my CNC router computer to the laser. There's a slide out drawer like a chrome tray on a toaster to capture off fall and also blocks the laser light. The slide out drawer face was loose. When I saw that it was mounted with button head cap screws, I just tightened everything up and everything was good. I machined a lot of ABS sheet, so I first do a test cut of an eighth inch thick ABS sheet. I want to see if both how well it cuts and if an odor is created. I did a small four millimeter hole and it looks good using acrylic settings. They sent me a package of three millimeter tinted acrylic sheets. After playing with the settings, I decided to make a small sign of my logo. All the settings I've used for this whole video were from their website, the recommended settings for this model. I just copied and pasted it into Excel spreadsheet and then I printed it out. There was some burr on the back. But after some sanding, it looks pretty good. I had a cutting board that I made a while back and decided to put my logo on the front to see how the engraving would look. I had to remove the tray and honeycomb slats due to the thickness of the cutting board. There is a safety interlock for the tray and enclosure door. The laser won't run without them in place. To bypass this, just press the two latching buttons behind the front panel. You should wear safety glasses if you do this. Using the Falcon 2 Pro's built-in camera made it easy to line up my logo. I ran it with the recommended settings for walnut engraving, but I ran it again because the maple just wasn't dark enough. I was pretty happy with how it came out. They sent me a rotating kit with the laser, so I decided to try that out too. I didn't have anything like a thermos that you would typically use this for, but I did have a shipping tube. I installed four risers to elevate the frame. The rotary kit plugs into the Y-axis motor connector. It came with instructions that were very clear on how to set it up with a laser and in light burn. In light burn, you'll need to input the diameter or circumference of the item that you're engraving. I just used settings for craft paper to engrave my cardboard tube. I had no trouble at any point with the setup during this test. I mean, what can I say? It's a cardboard tube, you know, it's, it's engraved. But I just really was curious about the process and everything was pretty simple. I found a piece of powder coated aluminum square tube. It's a scrap piece from when I installed our fence. I decided to engrave it using anodized aluminum settings. It 
It actually turned out looking really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and install the 1.6 watt laser to show you an example of what it can do. I used a similar laser when I built my Trumpeter 1 200th Titanic scale model. When I was constructing the interior walls, I used layers of construction paper to produce the appearance of paneled walls and other fine details. Even the grand staircase railing was cut on the laser. So this is just one example of what you can do with a 1.6 watt laser. They sent me a pack of 3 millimeter thick basswood. I decided to design an interlocking shadow box to cut on the Falcon 2 Pro. I spent less than 45 minutes on this simple design. So far, Creality's recommended settings have proven to work very well, and that's what I'm using here. The total cutting time for all the pieces was less than 20 minutes. All the pieces fit together like a puzzle. I was pretty pleased with the way it turned out. The added contrast of the cut edges is a nice touch. Now for my concluding thoughts. Overall, I'm very pleased with the laser. I think it's a great addition to my shop. Not having to wear safety glasses while it's running is a nice feature. I'm impressed with how well the enclosure contains smoke and fumes while it's running. I like that there was an extra fan port that I could use to trigger my external fan and how well it cuts a variety of materials and thicknesses, which is what I'll be using it for mostly. I found the built-in camera very helpful when arranging my cuts in light burn. This will allow me to consume materials more efficiently. The build quality is commendable, and the one time I had an issue with the machine turned out to be user error. It cut ABS sheet very well, although I'll have to do some more research and experimenting before doing any large scale cutting. After using this machine for the past couple weeks, the only complaint I can come up with is the loud annoying beeps when you first power the machine on. And that's just nitpicking at this point. While I didn't do any formal testing and spit out a bunch of stats about the machine, I hope you found some value here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.